college football transfer talk. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can check them all out over tunicatravel.com. We're going to be at Hollywood Casino for the NFL, AFC, and NFC championship games. We're previewing the game. We're broadcasting live. Hollywood Casino, 12.30 p.m. is the time that we're going live. We will be there at 11 o'clock. We'd love to see your faces there. Come hang out with us. You will be able to hear the show there. Uh, we will have a speaker set up. Every, everybody will be able to hear. We're going to be at the stage bar right next to the sports book, right next to the uh, right next to Tunica's biggest projection screen, 12 foot by 24 foot. They got food and drink specials all day. Come hang out. Watch the games with us. We'd love to see you. We'd love to shake your hand, tell you thank you for coming out, coming out, and, uh, and, and thank you for watching the show. We always appreciate that. So if you are in the Tunica area, if you're in the Memphis area, come on down. It's the best place to watch the game in the Mid-South. Let's jump into this. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts to Oklahoma. Was this surprising to you? Yeah, I, I really thought he was going to end up either in Miami or Maryland. I did as well. I, I thought he was going to follow uh, Mike Loxley, his former OC. Loxley was the one that that really created the the running quarterback offense at Alabama. Correct. And I thought that that Hertz would follow him maybe, but Loxley was never able to work with his passing game. So then I thought, well, he'll follow Enos because Enos really worked with him this year, and his passing is worlds better right now than it was before Enos got there. No, I mean we don't really have a big enough sample size to say that, Gary. It, not a, it's not a huge sample size, but I mean the guy had seventy eight passes this year, and they looked but, great. Okay, like I, and, I'm and saying, all the games that he got passes in, they were blowing a team out until the Georgia game. You know as well as I do that you can tell a difference. You can tell a difference I, in I how a guy throws a football. Maybe I, I guess I didn't pay that much attention. My biggest thing was not he would want to go to Oklahoma. I kind of thought Lincoln Riley would kind of get a better quarterback than him. I well, I mean, who? I don't like, that's know. The thing. I, don't I don't know. know I mean, you don't think he can't recruit the number one quarterback in the country? Well, he already did, but he's not getting there until the summer. But but that's my question is is like, so do you think Jalen's going to start? Yeah, Jalen Jalen's going to play this whole year. The idea behind Jalen coming to Oklahoma that's why they got rid of Austin Kendall, right? They are not got rid of, but. And now they're trying to block him. That's something else we're going to talk about here in a second. Yep. Um, but Kendall already knew the system, already knew everything. But that's what Riley does is he builds a system around the player that he has. I got you. And with Hertz, he's got an experienced guy that's already been through the wars. No, not knocking Hertz at all. No, no, no I'm but, with you. I'm, how Hertz funny is, is this? It's kind of the back and forth that, Hertz that we used to. Hertz is drastically be. different than Baker and Kyler Murray. I Agreed. mean, I mean, just obscenely different than those two guys. Yeah, Baker is is an all time passer. Kyler, Kyler Murray. is it's all time passer, but is also super fast. No, I'm he's talking super fast, speed demon but, fast. But he can throw the football with the best of them as well. Yeah, it, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Trying to put Hertz in the category of those two guys is just not. It's not fair. That's and not. Yeah, that's not okay. It's they're just it, different guys now. There will be people that set the expectation level of that because of what Riley has done with those first two quarterbacks, right? Like, they will expect uh, he's probably going to be a Heisman finalist and he needs to make the playoff. Shame on those people. I don't think if, that if that's needs the to be level of standard for success, then shame on you. Because, I mean, you know that that's Four what Four teams happen. get to go to the playoffs. That's it. That's the list. Well, Oklahoma's made it the first two years of Lincoln Riley's tenure. I, I get that, but to assume that he's going to do it every year is just – not okay. No, and I'm that I'm, can't be the standard. I am on your side on this. I agree with you. I I think he goes in, he wins nine, ten games. I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, but he has done this with with grad transfer or not grad transfer, but just transfers. Period. He's done it with transfers before. Well, that's what hurts is is a grad transfer. Yeah, but I'm saying he's the other guys he had at least for a couple of years. Kyler sat behind Baker. That's Baker right. had a couple of years. That's right. So. You know, it, it, now, but they both came from different places. Kyler came from Texas A and M. He did not look like near the quarterback no. at Texas A and M that he turned into at Oklahoma. And Baker Mayfield looked really good at Texas Tech, 
but he turned into a whole different beast at Oklahoma. I can only imagine what Jalen Hurts will look like when he gets done in Lincoln Riley's system. Correct. I think this was a move that that may have made him millions of dollars. Oh, it could have made him an NFL quarterback. Yeah. I, I think Riley is that good. The The NFL game respects Lincoln Riley's offense so much. And I think that might have been part of why Hurts decided to go this route. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. Now, if you think you can go in this system and you can look really good and you can win, this is the right move. I just it was surprising to me because I didn't think it was an option. I didn't think I figured Lincoln Riley would have gone after a quarterback that fit his system because the last two guys looked a lot alike in how they played. They're both yeah. undersized and they both moved pretty well and they both could sling it with anybody. Yeah. At, at one of these days we're going to talk before the NFL draft because that by the way, are we going to the NFL draft? Mm. It's in Nashville, right? Yeah, I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll see. We, want, we're also planning want, on a barbecue trip sometime soon. I want credentials. I don't want to go as a fa- – A, it's really hard. It's actually a lot harder to get into than you think because I've been Googling to try to get into them. Um, you can't just go to the NFL.com and buy tickets. Well, I thought the one in Nashville is supposed to be free. No, it is free. It doesn't cost anything, but there's a lottery system. You can't just walk up and say, I want in. Uh, okay, okay. I, Either a, way, it, it, this well, is a digress. story for another day. Um, off of Jalen Hurts, in the same program, while they are recruiting a grad transfer, they are blocking. This is what pisses me off about college football. Blocking a grad transfer. This is one of the great pet peeves that I have about college football. Austin Kendall has already graduated from Oklahoma. He's got one more year of eligibility. Is that right? Or is it two? I don't know. Either way, if Oklahoma just signed off on it. He could go to West Virginia where he wants to go and play immediately. But this is part of the rule that was not changed. A school can block a player from playing immediately. Now, if if Kendall really wants to play at West Virginia... But I thought as a graduate transfer, they can. If you graduate, you can go anywhere you want and play immediately. Nope. The school can still block you from playing that very next year. See, I didn't know that. And, and Oklahoma is Because that's trying... why I thought Jalen could have gone anywhere, because he graduated. Now, Alabama would not have blocked Jalen. Don't, don't say that. Just don't say that. I, If he wanted to go to Auburn or he wanted to go to LSU, you can bet your ass he would have been blocked, Gary. Don't say that. Uh, you know what? I mean, Because it's, it right. one, it's right. one of the reasons why I have the problem with Nick that I have. I've been consistent about this all the time. It's not I hate him because I ain't him. It's it's I don't like the way he plays the game. You can say he plays it to win, and that's fine. But but he gets up there and he openly calls kids who want to transfer out of his programs quitters from a podium which millions of people listen to. But yet he'll go take somebody else's transfer in a heartbeat. I guarantee you that is my problem. I guarantee you. Oh, he wouldn't call him a he would Jaylen. never call no, Jalen Hurts no, a quitter. But but I assure you of this: Jalen wasn't going to Auburn and he wasn't going to LSU. That's a, Gus Malzahn made a a late push for Jalen Hurts. That would that ain't but that I, ain't I, but happening. You, you might be right. They might have tried to block that one. And I think that's garbage. I think if a coach can leave at the drop of a hat with no repercussion whatsoever and nothing stopping them other than some language in a contract that they got to sign because they're being compensated, then I think the players who are not being compensated with anything other than a scholarship should be able to say, "I'm going to drop this scholarship and I'm going to go pick up this scholarship." With no questions asked. Everybody that recruited this kid is gone. Yeah. His OC is gone. His quarterback coach is gone. Why should he have to stay at a school where the people that sold him on that school are no longer there? Well, now, are, are you talking about Oklahoma or are you talking well, about? I'm, well, I'm talking about Jalen. Because Oklahoma, is, yeah, they're still there. They're all still, oh, same thing with Oklahoma. The, the guy that recruited him, well, I guess he's still there. No, he's still there. That's what I'm saying. He's no. still there. Anyway. Uh, but, but it doesn't matter. Lincoln could have left tomorrow for the, for the NFL. No, you leave right. tomorrow for another job. Uh, did you see the uh, the Jaden Hazelwood kid, the five star receiver that's now at Oklahoma, that called the uh, the Georgia coaches fake and not genuine? Uh, it, because he it, so he he was going to go to Georgia. He had been no committed to him for a long time. He's from Georgia. He was going to go to Georgia, but uh, Jim Cheney was in his 
house talking about all the stuff they were going to do with him. They were going to change up the offense for him at Georgia. Da 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 da. And days later, Cheney's gone to Tennessee, and that's what he was talking about. He said they're all fake. They're going to sell you on this. They're not genuine. They're going to tell you all these things that they're going to do with you, and then they'll leave. They'll leave. This is why the players have to be able to transfer without replica. And I'm and I'm okay. I understand it can't be the wild wild west and all this other stuff. But you should be able to get one transfer. You can't be a free agent every year. You can't transfer every year. But you absolutely should be able to say, you know what? I was sold to this team. I came to this school. I was promised all these things. I got here, and I just didn't like it. It's it's what I said on the Daily Show the other day, which is, you better be in love with with your head coach. You better be in love with now, you. You better be in love with the place. Yeah. The the program and and everything that is there. You better love that. Don't fall in love with the coach. Don't fall nope. in love with this and that. Now, the coaches obviously will have to make a difference if you're wanting to play the NFL, right? But you better love the place that you're going because there ain't no telling who's going to be there by the time you're gone. That's, right? that's the problem I have is the coaches can leave at will. Yeah. so the, And the, they should be able to as well. And so it's so back onto the Austin Kendall thing, which is basically what we've been talking yeah, sorry about. Sorry about that, yeah. Um, Oklahoma's blocking him. They're blocking him from anybody that is on their schedule for the next two years. Yes, and I don't. I hate that rule. I, I think it is rule. I hate completely it. I hate ridiculous it. because if the kid was good enough to beat you, good enough to to win your starting job, then you wouldn't be letting him go. That's right. Obviously, you don't think enough of him. So, why in the world would you block him from going to another school with a brand new head coach? that you don't feel is in your class anyway. And so that means he can't play anywhere in the Big 12. So, so Or anybody that's on Oklahoma's schedule, Oklahoma so says, Houston but I'm, I'm or more, whatever. I'm more concerned about the Big 12 because that's where he lives, Power 5 area. The only schools in his region are all right there, and they play them all. Yeah. So he has to leave a place – and I don't know if he's from that area. He might be from Florida or California or whatever. But but let's Good say question. a kid, let's say like a lot of kids come from Alabama. A lot of kids come from Mississippi. A lot of kids come from these small southern areas, these small southern states. And and if you came from there and you want to stay close to home, but now all of a sudden you want to transfer, well, we'll let you transfer, but you better be willing to go play in Washington. You better yeah. be willing to go play in Oregon. Oh, man, I don't know anything about the West Coast. My family can't ever come watch me go Ken, play there. Kendall is from North Carolina, from Charlotte, right. North Carolina. So, that, so that's irrelevant. But but it's the same concept of we're, we're forcing this kid to move away from an area that he went to just because you don't want him anymore. Or he doesn't want yeah. to be there anymore. What if you love him? That's fine. Man, this is America. You have a right to change your mind. That's true. There's, there's a, almost nothing you can't get out of in this country that you made a decision on except for – taking a scholarship from one school, and then that school saying, we're going to tell you where you can and can't play if you ever want to leave here. No, you're right. I just think that's garbage. But, so I watched a YouTube video not too long ago about the NCAA. A friend of mine sent it to me. The NCAA and, like, the history of it and how it was founded. And its only purpose when it was founded was to protect students. Because kids were and getting, that's a far, because kids far were getting different. killed. And now all it does is protect the establishment, and it cares nothing about the students. Nothing. And anybody from the NCA want to call us and, 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 and argue that point? I would, I would like to see some type of case that you would make to where you actually put the student's best interest at heart. Yeah. Where you have protected and defended students. Yeah. Because you don't. You defend schools. You defend establishments now. You I'm defend billion-dollar organizations and multi-million-dollar coaches, but these kids that get, oh, they get a scholarship. Well, congratulations. You know what that degree is going to get you? Almost nothing. Almost nothing now. Almost nothing. You're talking to two guys that don't use their degree at all. Nope. Or don't have a degree. Yep. We make a living. Yeah. And we're doing it just fine. It works out fine. That's it right. It works out well. Um, let's talk about Tate Martell going to Miami. So – the waiver process, it, obviously we're not big fans of the, the graduate transfer deal, et cetera, et cetera. Tate Martell decides once Justin Fields enrolls at Ohio State that he is out. out. He's not hanging around. He's not fighting for this job. None of that mess. 
He's going to Miami. So he decides to transfer. And now he is actually lawyering up so that he can play immediately. Correct. For Miami in 2019. Our guy Mars doing that? Uh no, this is not Mars. Okay. I know uh, that he's I know that Mars he's has done, done a lot of them for many 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 of these. Um Mars is is representing Justin Fields. Oh, okay. So, I knew that. I recognize yeah. the name for, for he he needs he needs to get on the Oklahoma guy too. Kendall, somebody needs to get on the Oklahoma. Guy. So, somebody will get on Kendall. That that'll happen. Like it, this it, Oklahoma's not going to be able to block him. All right. Um but at the NCAA can can approve any waiver that they want to, right? That's right. So Justin Fields, it was the baseball player with the racial slur. And for Tate Martell, I could not figure out anything. What's his case going to be? Yeah. I, I don't so, know the but, answer. But that he's, that's what he's doing. And so reports are that, that he's got a better chance than you would think. Well, yeah, and of good, course, good attorneys can – Make can stuff sway happen. anything. No, they yeah. make they make things happen. I'm not. So his biggest thing will be the coaching change, right? But coaching changes in the past have have never. That's right. That's that's not going to get you to play immediately. Like you'll have to sit out the year. But because he was not involved in all of the uh, extracurricular stuff that happened at Ohio State, they think that he might use that. To try and get an immediate. I didn't know this program was as dirty as it is, and I don't want to be associated with it. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this: in today's in today's climate, in the world in which we live today, I actually think if you wanted to walk now, it's kind of hard to say I want to leave there and go to Miami. But if if you if you wanted an out, I think it would be real hard for you to go to whatever body is judging you and say. Look at the people running this place. I strongly disagree with what the leadership has done, and I want out. And for you to be able to say, I kind of agree with the kid. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want them attached to my resume either. Would we, I think it? Granted, like I said, tough pill to swallow when you when you're changing that for Ohio uh, for Miami. But I I I I'd actually like the argument. Yeah, no, I, I like the argument as well. And and Miami for what it is, uh, I mean the reputation of the program has been cleaned up with Rick. Oh yeah, yeah. That, like all Manny of, Diaz, all of its is, reputation was years past, and it's and it is wait even before Rick got there, they weren't good at football anymore. But but they had cleaned it up from the the just I am of the opinion that they if, were if they let Tate Martell play immediately. You just need to do away with the waiver process. Oh, completely. Just just let everybody but, go and play wherever they want to but that's immediately. What, but that's every, what you and I have talked about in the past. Right. But if you get one if, transfer. If you're gonna have these rules you get one do over. If you're gonna have the rule and then people find loopholes out of them every totally, freaking totally time. Agree. Then then just do away with it. This is this is where I always want to put my lawyer hat on, even though I don't know a whole lot about the law, and just say, look. If there's loopholes around it, we need to just scratch it. If we're not going to enforce it, then we need to just yeah. scratch it. Because it, that's the thing. They're not enforcing this at all anymore. Kids are playing immediately it, uh, over the past three, four years. The number one it question all I the ask time. about a rule is, what is its purpose and who is it hurting? Yeah. Okay. These are the two questions I ask. Does it serve a, a purpose? Does it actually serve a purpose? And who is it hurting? And, and when you ask, if I said everybody should be able to transfer once, free of charge, no, no, no ifs, ands, or buts, no questions asked, um, no penalty. You just get one do over in life. I was 17 or 18. I made a commitment. I, I shouldn't have to live with that commitment forever. If I got into it and realized I made a bad decision, regardless of what the decision was, you should be able to say, I changed my mind one time. We all should have that. I would like to know who that hurts. I don't have an answer for you. Well, the only people it hurts are the are the the big boys that write the rules. Yeah, because because nobody is making a commitment to go to a small school and then saying, "Oh, well, I think I want to go," you know, sit behind the three quarterbacks at Clemson. You know, That's nobody's going to have a great year at Memphis and be like, "Oh, man, I think I'll just go play at Clemson behind Trevor." Like, no, nobody's going to do that. Or, or you could have a really good. 
But, uh, but you could say, or you it, it, a situation like this year where Oklahoma is looking for a quarterback. They've got a team, but they need a quarterback. That's right. In that situation, yeah. Well, um, and, and let's say, I, I, as a young recruit, I want to go play behind Trevor. I just watched him win the national championship, and I say, you know what? I want to test myself against the very best. I want to go play behind him. Then there's and I want to see if I can beat him. And if you get there and you realize he's a true freshman and he says he's going to stay for four years, and you're like, all right, I'm not doing this. He, he, it's okay to say, I tried. I tried to beat the very best, yep. and I couldn't. And there's no shame in that. So let me go play somewhere else where I can play for three years and, and then do whatever I can do. It's like or Justin four years. Fields. Yeah. I yeah. don't think there's anything wrong in that. Nope, I agree. So, I agree. I, I don't like the blocking, though, even more than the fighting to have the NCAA, having to fight the NCAA for waivers. At least the NCAA has kind of turned over a lot of these waivers and yeah. given in. I really hate the blocking. I, I mean, that in, in Well, that, that part that of the rule should have been me. rewritten – at the same time that the other transfer stuff was done, right? It should have been rewritten, and it wasn't, and now Oklahoma's taking advantage of it, and I think it it makes Lincoln Riley look small. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's not a good look for them whatsoever. Uh, I don't think it helps you out recruiting in the future. I don't know, But man. I could be Nick, wrong. Nick has blocked plenty of people, and he's never hurt being recruiting. He just never has. Well, most people don't believe that they're, uh, they're going to end up recruiting or uh, uh, transferring. That's the thing. Like, if you want to be an NFL player, you go to Alabama. I don't know, man. But guys tried to tried to follow Kirby, and he blocked them. There, there was there, there was, was one guy, but doesn't matter. That's this is one guy. That, one is agreed. too many, but it but, didn't hurt Nick in recruiting after that. Uh, Should have. I wish it would have. Eh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. Now that ended up going the way it was supposed to. That's right. Um. But even still, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't stop. Didn't stop him from stepping to a podium and calling the kid a quitter. Just that saying. was a different kid. Just saying, Blake Barnett. That's who he was talking about, and that's because Blake Barnett quit on his team in the middle of the season. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So it, I, it's I understand the the different side you know, of that. You're talking about semantics. <laughs> that, that does not matter. All right, that wraps up our college football uh, transfer talk. I guess. <laughs> like I, I don't know what segment we're going to call this, but. But that's what that is. Uh, As always, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books. Go check them out at tunicatravel.com. We will be at Hollywood Casino this Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. January 20th. I had to double-check myself. That's all right. That's okay. January 20th. We're going to be there about 11 o'clock. The show starts at 1230. Come hang out. We're going to go for about an hour. We'll be done about 30 minutes or so before the, uh, the Rams and the Saints kick off. Food and drink specials, it's going to be a good time. Hollywood Casino, January 20th. Come hang out with us. We want to shake a hand. We want to tell you thank you for your support. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you next go-round.